welcome to the Hacker Factory podcast live from RSA. Uh, today I have three good friends and content creators joining me, uh, Ben Sinkita Bapora, uh, Daniel Meisler, and Jason Haddix. Uh, so I've met these, all, these gentlemen all through uh, the information security community. Uh, actually, I got to meet Daniel during RSA back in 2019 through Jason, which Jason I met as a Bug Crowd Ambassador, and then Ben, of course, being part of the, the bug bounty scene, met Ben through his days at HackerOne and, and his uh, Naham Con. So it's an honor to have them on today. So our topic today is going to be content creation. So we're kind of living in what I consider to kind of be the golden age of content creation. So you see a lot of people that are starting their careers now that come from content creation. You know, one example is the cyber mentor. You know, he kind of started from content creation, became a practitioner, a business owner. And so you've seen all that. And before, you know, they didn't have the opportunity to do that. So I think it's really awesome. And you guys are, are great examples of that. So. Uh, why don't we have everyone go around and introduce yourself. We'll start with you, Ben. Cool, hi, I'm Ben. Uh, most of all, I know me as Nahamsek. Uh, I've done uh, the bug bounty thing for a while. I got a lot of my uh, credentials from doing bug bounties and hacking into companies like Airbnb, Snapchat, Amazon, the Department of Defense. And uh, I played the, the life of, uh, the corporate life for a bit, and then uh, eventually I decided to go do content full time, which we'll talk about in a little bit. Uh, but yeah, and I do full-time content training and public speaking. Yeah, it's pretty awesome. That was amazing to see that you recently went full-time. When did you did that back in about December, was it? Yeah, about November around Thanksgiving, uh, some stuff came up and I had to sit down and go, do I want to take, uh, take a break? Do I want to go get another job? Do I want to go independent? And I think it's either now or never with content if someone's going to do content. and build something around it. I think with what you said, the digital age that we live in right now, content is king, and a lot of uh, cybersecurity companies are getting into the content realm, and uh, everyone wants to make some sort of video content. And I think that the blog posts and those kinds of marketing is getting phased out, and uh, video, audio, and uh, the curated content is the king of uh, marketing now, so I'm excited to be a part of it. Yeah. And Daniel, if you'd sure. Yeah, so I've been um, actually writing online since I started in uh, 1999. So I started blogging pretty early, um, got into security right about the same time, and I've been doing security for close to, I think, around 23 years I'm co coming up on. And uh, in 2015, I started like an official newsletter, uh, Unsupervised Learning, and now that is my actual brand. Uh, so I just left Robinhood like five months ago and I'm doing uh, content full time. Awesome, and Jason. Yeah, so um, I started out uh, doing a little bit of blogging in my early days about 15 years ago, mostly on offensive security and hacking, and so um, that went really well. Uh, I pivoted into being in the industry. I was in the industry for several, several years doing red teaming and offensive security. Then pivoted into leadership, uh, doing the CISO thing and security of leadership at different companies. Then moved into Bug Bounty uh, and was, you know, with Ben, you know, during kind of the Bug Bounty explosion, which was cool. And now I'm back into doing a lot of content and training, uh, but I also have a full-time CISO job and a red teaming company that I lead. So, yeah. Yeah, it's pretty awesome. Good. Thinking back of when we first met, actually how I first found you is through the blog posts that you wrote. And that's where I became aware of, like, Bug Bounty, because, you know, there's a lot of things in the pen testing world that people are missing out on, because, you know, if you've got a set amount of time to perform a pen test, then uh, you're not going to try as hard as some of the bug hunters, you have to find things. And so seeing some of these bug hunter tips is the way I found you, then how I ended up finding out about uh, Ben, you know, finding those tips and, you know, they're really get great uh, information there. So as far as like someone starting out at a career, a lot of the viewers are people that are trying to break into information security or move into IT or from some other areas. So what do you guys think as far as an approach for someone to create content that's maybe want to break into the industry, what would you recommend them do uh, content-wise to kind of get their name out there? So then. I think the best thing is, uh, I think GitHub is a good place. It's not really your written content, but it's just somewhere you can showcase some of the work you have done. You're creating content in the form of tools that people use in GitHub, but also doing like blog posts. You know, I, I said that blog post is going to be phased out because you know, the video content and audio and credits of it the new thing, but I think still having a blog of some sort where you analyze uh, vulnerabilities or you write the stuff that you have found or you find a CVE they can talk about. It's a really, really good place that you want to demonstrate your, uh, your technical capabilities. 
I think those are the, the top two, but also with the age of TikTok now, anyone could create content, any, any of us can become a content creator, and you, can, you have a niche to make content, to share your learning path, for example. I know people that are doing that, you know, I, I want to get a cybersecurity job, so here's my day-to-day -day, you know, updates. There, there's so many different content you can make nowadays, I don't think there's a shortage, or you know, there's so many different niches you can join. Uh, those are the top three for me, though. Like, you can make the, the small form content, written form, and then tools and the GitHub pages of uh, some sort. It's interesting you mention that, because the TikTok thing, just like Serena, for instance, yep. the way she took off, and I mean, she ended up landing a, a job at Black Hills because of the content creation, so mm -hmm. it's really kind of cool. And, you, and since you mentioned the writing piece, that's one of the things, in my opinion, if you're if you have a hard time recording videos and stuff, maybe that's a good place to start. And, and uh, you guys have done a lot of blogging and stuff. So Daniel, what, do you, what is kind of your opinion on, on kind of getting started? Yeah, similar to Jason with the hacking methodology, my first thing was a TCB dump primer. And I wrote it when I was just, <clears throat> I was knee deep in packets because I was doing firewalls. And I just had to learn like deep uh, protocols. So I started writing about TCB dump and just put it out there. And it kind of goes back to what you were saying. You learn in public. Just be excited about a thing and talk about it. And people will see you learning. It, and it doesn't matter if you're a student. The student becomes a teacher because you're learning and you're out in front of the people who want to learn also. So you're not only inspiring them to learn things, you're also inspiring them to create something. Yeah, and, and, and mentioning that, some of the stuff on your blog post I've referred to students that's really good is the one that you did on encryption, obfuscation, uh, that yeah. blog post was awesome because knowing the difference between that, you really broke it down in an easy to understand method and in you know, a fairly short blog post. Yeah, I used to be really into explainers. Um, and actually, a lot of my traffic is actually explainers. Unfortunately, that's the thing that uh, AI is actually best at. So um, I'm expecting that traffic to, to drop quickly, but I, I would say it doesn't matter. Get the stuff out there. Yeah. And I think sometimes people want to find the easiest method, so if they know they've got a resource where they can find that, they may not even worry sure. about AI yet. Yeah. So Jason, what, what's your thoughts on people that are trying to you know, get started out, start a career and use content management to, to yep. leverage that? So start a career in content management or start a career y yeah, through use, content Using management. content management to yeah. help launch like a cybersecurity. Okay, career. yeah, so, yeah, so I mean a lot of stuff that the guys have already said here, I think that, um, I think that what you have to think about is that now as cyber professionals, especially ones in a competitive job market, uh, you have to look at your body of work as like an artist portfolio basically, right? So you will have some GitHub or you will have a blog and it doesn't really matter what channel you choose. I don't think anything's really going to phase out honestly. I think everybody will just have different strengths, TikTok and stuff like that. I mean, we're part of some groups where you know, we're, we're doing the same content but on different platforms. We're doing different content but on the same platforms. I mean, we're, you know, it's, it's all feasible. Uh, I would say the thing that makes you stand out though is your voice, your opinions, your passion that you mm -hmm. apply to your portfolio, right? And so, you know, if you're a SOC analyst, you know, and you have a passion for, you know, generating alerts or, you know, doing, moving into threat hunting or whatever, or even if you want to aspire to do that job, you create your portfolio from all these free free sources that, do, you know, exist nowadays for free. So. Um, a lot of people are trying to get into offensive security, right? That's, that's the dream for a lot of people. And so, you know, there's tons of resources now available for free on the internet. Uh, and, you know, there's some really great examples of people who have gotten jobs, you know, through building their portfolio online. And it could, you know, it could be any of those content mediums, honestly. So. And I think one of the great examples, too, is one of the streams you did with Ben on creating a resume. Yeah, I thought that was really cool. That was the way really you, good. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, the way you took like uh, what you use like Google Docs or something like that to create oh, yeah. something. Google compared, Sheets. Yeah, Google yeah. Sheets compared to some of the fancier uh, resume templates and then showing how to document uh, things from Bug Bounty and all yeah. that. So yeah, yeah. That, was, that was great. Yeah, I think the um, that stream was really fun. First yeah. of all, yeah. And now uh, that we're talking about like why were we not done more of those? Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I think people were calling us, like giving us their resumes and going, "Hey, how do I improve this?" Yeah, exactly. Yeah, um, and yeah. yeah, I mean, all that is, I mean, we are we are getting to an age now with both AI and um, the ability to use platforms like Canva really cheaply to build your own graphics, right, and your own production value. And so uh, it's really it's really awesome. Everybody has the ability to level the playing field a little bit. And again, so what what brings you to the top of the you know drink or whatever your cream? You know, if you're the creamy layer, I don't know if that was the right analogy, but whatever. <laughs> um, it is your opinions, 
your passion, your personality, yeah. right? That, those are the things that are gonna you know, bring it out for you on top of your technical acumen, so. Yeah. And if I could add something to what you were saying, Dan, on the whole like uh, the learning or the, the how-to guys, you write a lot of primers, right? Mm -hmm. I'm sure writing those primers were a good way for you to know that you know this technology Absolutely. very good because if you can't explain, so there's two sides to it. If you can't explain something to somebody, then you, know, don't, you don't know that topic fully. But if you have the capability of sitting down someone, whether they're technical, whether they're not technical, and be able to tell them what this piece of technology does, or what is this terminology, what is this product, whatever it is, this hacking content or technique, you can explain that it shows that you've learned that topic more. So I think for people that want to uh, break into creating content, there's a very huge market with people that could just explain what is, for example, cross-site scripting. Mm -hmm. You can explain yeah. that to a five-year-old, you know, an eight-year-old, nine-year-old who wants to get into hacking or think cybersecurity is cool. It shows that you have learned stuff and also pushes you to get good at stuff. If it wasn't for you know, getting into a teaching thing or doing a course or doing the streams, I wouldn't be able to understand a lot of the topics that I talk about today because when I was making slides, I was like, okay, what is this thing that I talk about yeah. at a core? I have to be able to explain this to my students. So I think there's also room for that stuff and it teaches you, it pushes you to understand content more and more or the technical content so you can break it up and you know, explain to other people. Yeah, it's very true. I, I started out doing those because I kept forgetting something. Yep. Mm -hmm. and like I would try to remember it and I'm like, I have to write this down. And then I would try to explain it to someone and I couldn't. And I'm like, I do not understand this well enough. I, no. think, I think it's called the Feynman method. Okay, like yeah, you, yeah, yeah, you, yeah. You get it done well enough where you can explain it. Yep. Um, the other thing that Jason touched on I thought was really interesting that we talk about a lot is we could actually try, us three could try to make the same exact podcast to compete with each other if we wanted to. It wouldn't work. Yeah, yeah. Because our life experience is so different and our professional experience, we would still produce something with our own voice. And, and the voice is actually more important a lot of times than the content itself. Yeah, you can replace the technical content, but the human experience is what's yeah. very unique. Yeah. And it was a very hard thing for me to come to terms that people want to hear from me. Right. Yes. You know, not, that, not that other people like Jason or you aren't making good content, but it's they relate to me in a different way than That's they right. relate yeah. to you, right? Like yeah, you know, absolutely. people that are working in different realms, or they're somewhere else in their life, yeah. or somewhere else in their career. They, re, you know, they, they they see you and they go, I, you know, I, I relate to this person more. It's just more. like music. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You, you prefer a different uh, style. Yeah. Yeah. So it's uh, the 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 best example for me is like you're uh, a mass primer. I type in your name and I put a mass primer every time I want to do something on mass. <laughs> <laughs> just so you know, it works. Oh, thank you. Yeah. For sure. I think uh, I think one of the things I get too is. Um, people who are coming in either to build their portfolio or to do content because they think it's fun, they really worry about redoing something somebody else has done. They're like yeah. really self-confident about it. And like Dan mentioned, your experience creates, uh, or your personal experience creates a whole different content for the viewer, right? Yes. And, and also there is so much power. Like my first talk was on how to use Burp Suite. Right, which there had already been like hundreds of talks about using Burp Suite, right? But I put my own flavor on it, I added my own context and experience, and I remember after I finished that first conference talk, Dan Kaminsky came up to me, um, and uh, he was like, hey, that was a talk I think a lot of people needed to hear, right? And I was like, oh damn, like yeah. Dan Kaminsky just talked to me, first of all, I'm like, <laughs> you know, second of all, yeah. like, yeah, exactly. So, um, you know, any any topic you're passionate about, you know, go for it, so. And I think one thing to be, to be said too is, someone might find your blog, your video, where they may not find Daniel's, so yep. it's a way for someone to find yeah. the, the content. And I, I kind of think too, sometimes people downplay what they actually know, and it seems like even when you're a beginner, you've only been into it a month, someone else is coming behind you with even less experience that you're able to share share with. Yeah, and one, one thing that's really valuable, I think people accept honesty, like both of these guys are really good at not just super technical content, but they kind of come at it from like, a vulnerable standpoint. It's like, hey, I really don't know this. Jason says this all the time. He's like, I'm learning live with you. I don't really know. Oh, that's a really cool tool. Um, thanks to the tool creator. It's like, it's uplifting. There's yeah. a lot of opportunity for that. Yeah. And just the message that you're sharing that people don't have to be perfect or have to be the smartest. So being Absolutely. role models, that's great. Yeah. yeah with the with the streams that I did, uh, with like I do like live stuff. I I show people how to do things. People ask me questions. I go, we're gonna look it up together and. I think people like seeing that more because yeah. they go, the, the, the most like, common thing that I see from people commenting in my chat is, 
oh wow, he's a pro, and like, I, I don't consider myself a pro, but to them I've done this for years, right? Like, oh, he's struggling with this box, or he has to look up this, it, it, it could be a loop sometimes that I, yeah. you know, I make a mistake on, I'm like, I gotta look this up, guys, I look it up really quickly. Yeah. And I think people reminding him that we're all human at, yeah. at the core of it, I yeah. look up the same things as you do, Plus, it makes people feel at ease that, hey, I, yeah. it's okay for me to look things up. Yep. Yep. You know, you don't feel dumb. And if it wasn't for these streams, I feel like if I was at a two out of 10 with like my bad scripting experience, I'm at a four or five because someone in my chat's like, oh, you don't let this like two lines that you wrote. Absolutely. You can cut it in half by like using, you know, <laughs> I don't write set and then like, you should use awk instead. I'm like, oh, okay, I'll learn yeah, some yeah. really cool stuff this way. Yeah. So I think it's uh, people want, you know, the outside relating to you. My point is like I want to also humanize us to say, hey, I have to, it's okay to look things up. You know, yeah. no one's gonna expect you to like memorize these things because nobody that's stupid to memorize these things that you don't need to memorize. And I, I think you and I talked about this once privately. Hopefully it's okay to talk Absolutely. about it now. But Go for it. when we both first started, we felt like this pressure to know everything yeah. and be the expert that everybody expected us to be on our shows, right? And that leads to burnout, it leads to hating content, it leads to all kinds of badness. Yeah. And then once you pivot to just being like, okay, it's okay to not know everything, yeah. right? Because nobody knows everything, right? Yeah. And to not act like that and to not put that pressure on yourself, it's really empowering and you can get back to what you like doing, which is making content. And it's really hard mm -hmm. to flip that switch to going that you want to accept publicly that people understand that you don't know everything because yeah. the expectation of a lot of the top hackers that would watch my streams are like, yeah, I saw you do it this way, just so you know there's a better way of doing it with this. Yeah. And then you, you start to go, wow, like how much things, I'm, how many of these things that I do, I'm inefficient, yeah. inefficient in, right? Like it took me a good solid year to finally go, you know what? I think people like it when I don't know things, so I could yeah. tell them like, hey, I don't know this thing. You know, when a blue teaming comes up, I'm like, I have no idea how this thing works. Yeah. Cool, let's look at it, you know, try hack me yeah. more. Let's look at a hack the box, or let's start Googling things to learn. Um, so it's just, I think, more and more people, my, my new thing is to make people be okay with not knowing, mm -hmm. and it's, it's made imposter syndrome even easier to deal with, because I tell people, I don't know anything, but I'm here to teach you how I learned those things, so you can also do the same way, so you can get an experience maybe on how I learned something that could help you also learn it easier to understand it better or digest yep. it a little bit better. I think it helps your audience too, when you're not perfect or whatever, I think it makes you more approachable, people are gonna like and respect you, as far as being approachable, if they think you're perfect, they're going to be scared to tell you anything different, yet you're doing yeah. something wrong, and be more likely to share resources with you and, and feedback. I actually feel like there's like levels to it. It's like, if you're a total mess, they might not like you as much. And then if you're like this hard ass who pretends to be perfect, a lot of people look up to that. And then the level above it is like, you, you leave that behind, and you open up again. So now you know your stuff, but you're way more humble, you're and they'll like, they'll like you even more. Yeah, you show the involvement in your learning career. Yeah. That, you know, you, you, the, 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 the beauty of it, the thing that I tell everybody is, we're the, if you're the smartest person in the room, they're in the wrong room, right? Mm -hmm. Unfortunately for us, that room is the internet. <laughs> yeah. 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 Right? <laughs> think about yeah, it, right? Yeah, so There's true. no yeah, way you yeah. can be the smartest person in the internet. Yeah, yeah. Yep. There's no way. Yeah. So unfortunately for us, and maybe fortunately for us, the room that we all exist in, is the internet that yeah. everyone knows the answer to and you have all these different smart people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what do you guys think as far as people trying, okay, you're creating content, how do you maintain an audience? So what tips do you have for maintaining an audience, keeping people coming back to see your content? I'll let you guys maybe go first. So I haven't done a ton of like YouTube or Twitch lately, right? I, I did a lot of that early on. I think a lot of my content is um, is talks at technical conferences and Twitter. I'm big on Twitter, right? And so uh, I do Twitter threads and stuff like that. I think the one thing you have to know about content creation is it's called content creation because you create content and you have to be regular, right? So it actually doesn't matter about the quality of the content all the time. It matters, it matters more about being regular with whatever style of content you're building. So I try to tweet twice a day and sometimes I am just, you know, S posting, right? Like about random <laughs> stuff, right? And, uh, you know, other times I'm writing very deep technical things and both of them resonate to different audiences. And, um, you know, sometimes I'm playing, you know, hacker CISO advice. Sometimes I'm talking about AI and cybersecurity. Other times I'm talking about bug bounty or a tool. Um, but again, people follow your personality and, you know, they don't care about what you're talking about. They'll consume it usually. I think, 
I think the cadence is really important, it is one thing in content creation, so, yeah. Yeah, I agree with that. I, I would say the authenticity is, is like the most important thing, is that you're just being yourself and doing it on a consistent basis. But um, my favorite thing, the um, I can't remember the director's name who won uh, for Parasite. He won the Oscar for Parasite. And they asked him, how'd you come up with this amazing idea? It was about poverty in Korea. And he said that uh, Martin Scorsese told him, the most personal is the most creative. Mm. So whatever frequency you're vibrating at during the day, that's what you put out. Um, and the way to think about channels is to think about um, those channels are ephemeral. Like Twitter will go away, YouTube will go away. What matters is your ideas and what you're thinking about and having those go out on a consistent basis, just being yourself. Because the moment you start trying to like force something, the, a little bit of the authenticity goes away. So I, I love that you said that because that's going to be kind of what I was going to say. I watched this uh, one, Alith just did a talk at B-Sides. She had this really cool uh, quote about the city. I wish I had it on me so I can say it, but uh, it, was, it was the same way as what I'm going to explain. I watched this podcast uh, about a year and a half ago. Someone linked me this thing. Uh, someone that had nothing to do with tech. is just like, hey, I think this will resonate with you. And I listened to the car ride home and exactly what you said. They were saying you have two choices when you come to the content creation. You can either create a persona or you can create uh, authenticity. You can be who you are and mm. amplify who you are so more and more will relate to you because those are the reality of it is you, you create this person, and I don't know, there's people that are infosec that you see them in person, they're not their online personality. They're two yeah. different people, right? But there's so much of that you can upkeep. There's so much of energy that comes with the, with the energy and the high energy you have to put on camera or the persona you create, it's really hard. But when you're yourself, you really have to own it and be okay with people not liking it, which that was something I struggled with because I have to put us, you know, who I really am as a person into the world, so people could relate to me, people could look up to me, people could want to interact with me or whatever it is. Uh, so that was one of the biggest things for me. When I read it, I was like, thank God I chose to you know, be me because the, other, the second line that the, the person says is, if you decide to do yourself, you know, again, amplify it, you have to amplify who you are and be okay with it. But if you decide to create a persona, you have to kind of like kill your person, like the real person, like your personality, who you are, that, that personality mm -hmm. goes away. You can never bring that up. That is who you are in your personal life. So that was a really pivoting point for me to realize that, yeah, I have to be myself and be okay with being vulnerable, being okay with accepting I don't know anything. And that helped me connect with more and more people. And you know, the thing that I say recently is I want to have true organic fan base of people that are wa going to watch me because of me, not because they think I am this cool person that knows everything. But, you know, I want to be the person that says, nope, don't know this thing, but guess what? I'm going to learn this in the next couple of months. Here's how I learn it. Join my journey and you know, learn with me. Yeah, one of the cool things about that is when you meet people in person and they tell you, yeah, you're just like you are on your podcast or on your, your videos. Yeah, it's kind of yeah. cool. That's cool, yeah. It gives hope to people that are, don't, I think the biggest thing with communities, and I've built a lot of communities, is all of us want to belong or feel like we belong to something. Yeah. And you can't have people feel like they belong when all of us sound the same, like a perfect persona that doesn't exist. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, at B-Sides, I had a person that came up to me and was like, hey, I watched an interview with so-and-so and I thought people in tech are all the, this profile that this person gave me and seeing you there, you know, telling us where you're from and how, you know, what your background was gave me hope that I can also do this. And I think that's way worth more than anything else. I think it's kind of interesting too, the different ways people do things. And we kind of mentioned comparing ourselves to others and stuff. And that's one of the things I've done with our friend from Don, Don Donzel. Uh, before I see him because I've been on his webinars and as polished and scripted as he is, he, he plans everything out so well, he's got exactly what he's going to say, plan that, and I don't do that myself and I just kind of worry about not being as polished and I just kind of come to the conclusion, just do what I do best and not try to force myself to, yeah. to it's be working. like that. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, working. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You have a good quote about comparing yourself. You all, I always ask you, every time we hang out and co comparison comes up, you say yeah. comparison is the... Wow. I Something know. about joy, do you know? Yeah, comparison is the thief of joy. There we yeah, go. The thief yeah, of joy. Yeah. I mean, that is yeah. the, the perfect way to do it. I mean, and this is, I mean, we're getting real personal now, but like Ben and I struggle with this a lot because we're in the exact same niche a lot of times, right? Bug bounty, offensive security. And I think just this last year, last year and a half probably, we're really like starting to be really good friends and just realizing that like, you're like, 
people like us for different reasons. We're always going to have crossover, and it's it's actually amazing. We've, we've been able to do a lot more stuff together, yeah. and like it's dope. I love it. Yeah. So. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, only person, and this is I think very generic. Everyone says that comparing yourself to yourself is probably the best thing to do. I really have to work really hard on it, hard on doing that and making that a skill set of mine. Yeah. Because if, if I'm consistently comparing myself to you know, any of these guys, you or other content creators, you, you can't. It's not fair not to you. Yeah. Outside of it being healthy, it's not yeah. fair to you because you have to overcome obstacles in your life that they didn't maybe. Or they had to overcome obstacles in their life early on, later on in their lives. You, know, you don't know what everyone's gone through. Yeah. Like We all have a unique experience in our lives that you cannot compare to because we all have different backgrounds. We all went to different lifestyles and different trauma, or whatever you want to call it. So I think you can't compare those. Uh, so I just like to sit down and I, you know, I look at myself and I go, oh, what was I doing six months ago? Or you know, I, I write myself notes. Uh, I have photos on my phone of me you know, taking photos of myself that has a note on it that says like, how I felt that day or what I accomplished that day or what I didn't accomplish or failed that. And I go, yeah. wow, I was worried about that six months ago? Like, <laughs> that, yeah. that's what I was worried about six months ago, yeah. two years ago? Yeah. And that is what's been you know, very cool to see that come up on my phone and go, wow, you were worried about the wrong thing six months ago, dude. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you funny. solved it or it doesn't even matter anymore. Yeah. I think it's a great lesson to you to see you know, a lot of crossover between what you guys do, but to collaborate. Because you know, with collaborating, you're going to get crossover from each other's followers that you might not otherwise, where some people would just try to compete and be better than yep. or even yep. trash yeah. talk someone. But to collaborate and help each other out, you're just only going to help grow your audience. So it's, it's really funny because um, since one of my primary mediums is Twitter, you know, uh, I started using an analytics tool really recently to understand my audience and what kind of things they like and what content of mine was good, right? And so a lot of people do this who are you know, Twitter content creators or whatever. Yeah. And I have this tool that shows me the overlap of me and somebody else's follower base. And I compared Ben and I. It's like there's only 10% crossover, yeah. which is crazy because in my mind it's like 100%, right? But like, um, yeah, I mean, people like us for different reasons. And, you know, every time we work together, people love it, yeah. right? It's great. Uh, I do stuff with Dan all the time. And it's like Dan's following is so different from mine. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's, it's amazing when they see, you know, really cool people come together and work together like it's it's a force multiplier like uh, it's something yeah. i say in our slack channel right it's like you know it's like us working together and supporting each other right it's like it's crazy yeah two is better than one for a reason i yeah, think yeah. people love yeah. seeing the, the communities coming together is really fun and also people love to see interaction i think people again I, I always go back to experience what i bring to the table is different than yours you guys have way more experience than I do in way of different parts of lives that I can bring onto the table, right? Mm -hmm. You guys have that different jobs that you have done that I would have never, I haven't even gone to that point yet in my life. Mm -hmm. So I think people, it's again what you said, it's different audiences and yeah. they like us and they relate to us for the different reasons and when you bring both of them together, I think people could even relate to that more or want to relate to it more. Yeah, and especially when like landing on his stuff gets you to our stuff and pretty soon it's, it's on your stuff and it just bounces around and accelerates. And uh, Jason mentioned this creator group. You just stood up this creator group. It's fantastic. Yeah, it's, it's really first, nice. It's the yeah. first time I've ever seen this truly work, where it's a bunch of people getting together and sharing secrets. It, it's been fantastic. Thanks, yeah. man. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you guys are in it, so you're the reason it works, yeah. right? Yeah. Like, you know, like, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's a great, great resource. Yeah. Especially, you know, if someone's weaker in some other area, just to learn the secrets of how you do this has, has been great. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Well, because there's a tendency to want to uh, hold things back. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And like the culture that's inside this group is basically, no, let's let's share and let's lift each other up. Yeah. Yeah. It's been pretty pretty interesting to see see all the tips and tricks that people have and and share. And how strong some people are in like areas that you're not. Like, yeah. Yeah. Uh, you didn't even know. Like you yeah. look at a Stoke who you know is one of our friends and like his production, lighting, planning off the charts, right? Yeah. As well yeah. as his technical content too, right? And he he can teach us stuff, right? And then Serena with like TikTok and like, boy, do I not know anything about how to do TikTok, right? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, like, it's yeah. such a different beast. All these different platforms that we come from are different. Yeah, yeah. You, know, yeah. you get to learn how to, you know, I, I want to get into TikTok and yeah. having a group like that that goes, hey, I want to do this TikTok thing. What do I do? And knowing people that are willing to share. Yeah. It's very cool. And I, I think like with, Every community, you need to have these kinds of groups that people are willing to share and join and yeah. lift each other up because, again, like the more we collaborate, the more it's going to push the industry and that community forward. So not only it helps me, you, and you guys as content creators, but it also helps our communities 
people that look up to us, and I think it just pushes that you know industry forward. That's, totally. that's great, and I think it sets a good example for people to you know collaborate more, get along better, and just kind of setting that example, being a role model. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah, since you mentioned the TikTok, you know, it's getting pretty popular, the short form formats even. Mm -hmm. It's kind of interesting, recently I heard like the term micro podcast, and it made me think of you, Daniel, since your mm. podcasts are like 20 minutes long, mm -hmm. the people are getting into that. It seems like the attention spans are getting shorter. Yep. People are used to TikTok and Instagram reels and stuff that they really don't want to watch something very long. So those shorter formats are, are uh, pretty interesting. So are you guys, dabbling in anything like that like youtube shorts or i'm moving towards short yeah i'm moving towards short so i don't i don't know if i'll move towards short but I, I wanted you to talk about like your idea like the thing you talk about uh with matt J about just capturing and releasing and platform doesn't matter right like yeah yeah absolutely i i mean yeah so if you have an idea it's a little nugget you write it down on a card or something or you type it into apple notes it's just an idea that idea could become a tweet and it should only be a tweet. It shouldn't really move on beyond that. It's really good for tweeting. It might be better for a TikTok. It might also be a blog post. It could be a podcast. It could be a YouTube. And some of these overlap and some of them don't. But at the core of it, you shouldn't be thinking about, is this a YouTube video? You should just be thinking about the idea. And ideally, as you get a little bit bigger, you can even have someone help you expand and figure out which of those channels it should go to. But there shouldn't be any friction to like, the nugget of the idea is what matters. Mm -hmm. With uh, YouTube, what I've seen, including my channel, some people that have like half a million to a million subscribers, the attention span isn't more than four, four and a half minutes. I think the most I see on my videos is four minutes. I used to post hour long, hour and a half long interviews. I refuse to post now because, well, there's no one's gonna watch an hour and a half. You know, some people will, like, you know, there's, a, there's a 20 or 30 people that can listen to the whole thing, right? Yeah. Yeah. Great, I'll put it, but I realized I, you know, I, the shorts are the next thing to do. So my content, what you were mentioning, I make a YouTube video or I make a video. The, 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 the core thing goes on YouTube. Then I pull stuff that I think the idea was based on, mm -hmm. like the, the things that I wanted to get across. The content, I make micro content of short format because the shorts people watch them more. You know, I post uh, a video on this technical thing. I made an, it's the best example. I made an SSR video that I'm really upset about. It's one of my ultimate favorite videos that I've made. It's like explaining this thing, doing labs, examples, and not a lot of views. But yep. I make, but when I make a video of me talking directly to the camera <laughs> and sharing my experience, that's like eight minute long. It yep. just takes off entirely. You're, you're a sucky hacker. Oh man, that triggers so yeah. many people. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, yeah, I, yeah, yeah, I made yeah. a video that said, "This is why you suck at hacking." It's yeah. literally me talking to the camera. Yeah. And now, you know, I was talking to Dan about it. So I'm like. I had to pull the audio from these things and maybe yeah, push yeah. them on you know, iTunes or yeah, put them yeah, on yeah. Spotify. Exactly. Like what you were yeah, saying, yeah. how do you make new audiences and create, you know, how do I reach more people? Is, yeah. That's how to wait, the way to do it. But yeah, the attention span is getting shorter and shorter. I posted a video on Instagram that I never thought would you know, get a lot of views. Uh, it was five books. I recommended five books and that was it. It's at 20K views in a week. It's mm. crazy. Wow. Yeah. Why? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so it's what, one minute. It's 60 yeah. seconds. Yeah. Right? yeah, and one thing is like if you have that random idea while you're driving and you're like, oh, I have to write that down, that might actually produce more views because yeah. it's a raw, high quality thing that got you excited for a second. And then all of us have done this, the thing that you're talking about, where we plan the thing, yeah, yeah, like, yeah. we do the perfect execution, yep. launches Monday morning, crickets. Yeah. Nobody looks. Yeah. I mean, the people that look, so for that video, I had a small amount of people that really watched it, like, oh my God, more of this. I get it. I'm always going to create that content. Yeah. But I've noticed, like, anything over eight minutes, people aren't going to watch it. Yeah. And it has to be a, something that you can give value out of technical format. It's, it's very hard to make technical content nowadays. Yeah. There is a market for it, but it used to be not super technical, but also a format that's digestible for people. So, mm -hmm. but this is for content creators, right? So if your job is to get engagement, this is absolutely right. But if your goal out of content creation is to get a job, I would argue yeah. it has to be in depth to show people your skill level and your passion. Agreed. Yeah, your passion for the technical topic of which is going to lead you to the job, right? So if you're creating content for, you know, creating a brand that'll eventually get you hired, you know, probably better to be thorough. If you're creating content for your audience who is enamored with your, you know, your persona and the way you talk about things and the topics you like to talk about, absolutely great to do short form, you know, stuff like that, so, yeah. Yeah, and I think, would you agree, even learning in public, 
and being like, oh, I'm going to try this, I'm going to try this, mm -hmm. and eventually you have something. Even that can get you hired. Absolutely. Yeah. Seeing somebody's thought process in any of the domains of security is, uh, is amazing, right? In fact, that's the one thing I want to figure out on a regular interview. If I can go to their video and see what they're doing and just be like, oh yeah, they kind of work through the steps, they know how to Google, they, they have all the right resources bookmarked, they went through the rough steps that I would go through, yeah, that's great. Yeah. I know that they're going to have success you know, in the job. So. There were job markets. I did an interview for a large organization and they asked me some like super in-depth technical question and I was just like, I don't know, what the, it was like about a header or something. I was like, yeah. I don't know what the header name is, but this is what I would Google for. Yeah, yeah. And the guy was like, the interviewer was like, oh, okay, we never had someone answer this way. They always tell us like how they would <laughs> fix it, but it's good that you can tell me yeah. what you would specifically look for. I was like, yeah. I would search for this, honestly. And if yeah. you give me a second on the phone, I'll give you the answer right away. Yeah, I, I'm, yeah. I'm, not, you know, I'm gonna look it up. Yeah. And I looked it up and I gave him the answer. So showing people how you know to look up the information yeah. mm -hmm. is a very valuable thing. Yeah, and the next step will be you know, how you prompt AI to look up the information. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah, kind of speaking of AI, so yes. are, you, are you guys leveraging AI for your content creation? Absolutely. Absolutely. I am, yeah, yeah. I'm uh, moving in that direction. Yeah. Yep. I think, I think leveraging AI is a loaded word though, right? So if you are using verbatim like a chat GPT or something to create your content, you're not going to succeed like that because that's yeah. no right. longer your voice, it's no longer your perspective, it's just canned regurgitation of everything on the internet that already exists, right? Now, if you use it to help you write your narrative, you feed it your voice, you tell it exactly what you need it to do, and that you need an extra 200 words to fill this thing out, absolutely it can do that. Uh, and it can do it really well. Yeah, so I, I put out a thing recently that's got like a hierarchy of content in, in terms of its vulnerability to AI. And at the bottom, it's sort of like collection. And it moves up into like summarization or uh, curation. Then it moves into like heavy commentary, deep commentary and opinions. And at the final level, it's like creation. It's like a brand new idea or a product built on top of the idea. And if you think about AI, it's kind of scooping the bottom first. So we up here, we have strong opinions. Not, so we're not just producing this technical content, but also talking about why we think this is better, why we think this is the best approach. Mm -hmm. And that puts you up towards the top there. Um, so what I'm doing with it personally is I'm relying on a little bit of AI to do just the summary part, like a one sentence summary. But for the analytical part, for the opinion part, you can't automate that. Because yeah. Yeah. it can't replicate us. Um, and you want to make sure you do have that top tier part in your content. Yeah, what actually I've been leveraging for myself is just take the transcript, then feed it into chat GPT and asking it, create a 200 uh, character or less summary. Yeah. And then create a summary and then try to, you know, ask it what would be a good title that would draw people to this episode. That's 100%. The kind of yeah. 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 Yeah, outside of uh, exactly, I, I wrote a blog post using ChatGPT one day. I just want to try this thing out and I had a, I sent out a tweet and I was like, hey, what's an advice you could give yourself on bug bounty hunting if you could go back in time? I took the seven best comments, I was like, expand this. And then I put them all together and I read it and I was like, that sounds like very like weird, generic, generic right? Yeah. And I was like, and I was using a different different AI. You know, I took ChatGPT to the. You know, I took another one to you know reward how I write it. I was like, I sound like a marketing company. Like yeah. it's not yeah, me, yeah. right? And I was like, yeah, that's yeah. good for like a marketing strategy. Yeah. But the summary is that it's really good. I also ask it like some of the. You know, what should I make? I want to talk about this. What kind of content's coming out? What, what are some good content to make? Yeah. But the the nicest, the coolest thing I've done is, I've been using it for labs. Yeah. Uh, some of the oh, videos the, the coding that I need. Yeah. Yeah. So. I want to do some basic like HTTP stuff or I want to write a weird API with Flask. I'm not sitting out and writing that. I go, hey, this is the five endpoints that I need. I need it to take a post request that does X, Y, and Z and then does this with the outcome and giving it all these prompts. And it's really hard to make it work. But the two hours I spend using ChatGPT to write it, it's a lot easier than me debugging my own code and making sure it works. And it's a hack, right? It doesn't have to be a functioning API. It could be literally a piece of Python code that takes my input and shows up the output that I want. Yeah. And it's made my video content so much more engaging because on screen now, I have this like weird ChatGPT created lab yeah. that's been uh, helping out a lot. And I've thought about like telling people like, you can make your own labs with ChatGPT for some of yeah. this stuff. Yep. Yeah. So that's one of the coolest things I've been able to do with ChatGPT. I said people need to stay away from like creating content because exactly what you said, it's not really personal, it's not your right. experience. 
It's not your opinion really, and it sounds generic, but you can leverage it to come up with content. Summarizing is a sure. huge one. Uh, and then the transcript one, I'm just saying, hey, summarize this for me, for, give me video titles for it, or a blog post title for it. I mean, so much different from our, our topic about content creation, right? But I mean, like, you can use it in security testing too, right? Like, I've used it to parse APIs before and, uh, and technical stuff for security work, right? I've used it to create curl commands and... JQ is a yeah, good one to JQ, use JQ, yeah. <laughs> I mean, if you don't know the exact syntax, it can help you. Yeah. Um, I mean, so, and it's actually really engaging when you use it live with your students. I did a workshop this weekend on recon, and one of the parts of Red Team Recon and Bug Bounty Recon is finding the acquisitions for your target, right? And so I did the normal methods that I do, which are websites I go to, and then I asked ChatGPT, and I'm like, tell me all of the acquisitions of this company. And then I went a second step, and I was like, tell me all the acquisitions of those companies. And we found two or three that I didn't find from the websites, right? And so, um, and doing that live, they were like, their eyes lit up with the possibility of using AI to do security analysis and recon and stuff like that. So it was cool. Yeah. yeah. Very cool. So we're getting down pretty close to the end of the podcast. So you guys have any advice, like marketing-wise, like uh, you mentioned the video of why I suck at hacking. What are some recommendations you give for people to kind of draw people in to consume the content to help market it? You want to start it off? Um, so I don't focus as much as I probably should on like uh, titles, and um, and obviously I'm on YouTube, so I don't I don't use thumbnails, right? So it's mostly Twitter and mostly talks, uh, and and my brand is very in-depth technical on the on the things that I do. So uh, my appeal to most people is that I am updating my content every year. And they know that every year they're going to get a new version of it and that Jason is going to come tell them all the newest things and why they're the best things to use for that year for bug bounty and red teaming, right? So, um, so I think that I push very hard on my quality of content and that retains my, my specific viewership. But it's very different in other lanes for sure. Yeah, I would say <clears throat> not worrying about it too much and focusing more on the ideas, on the consistency that Jason talked about and um, making sure you have all the channels hooked up. I, I do believe everyone should be in text, which is newsletter, in audio, which is podcast, and then ideally some video if possible because some people just don't want to watch things or they don't want to read things, they only want to hear and vice versa. And then the other thing is just leverage your friends who are also doing this stuff and ask them to promote your stuff and make sure you're promoting their stuff and that will help lift it as well. From a video perspective, uh, the, the thumbnails and the title is, you want to give them a reason to watch your stuff, whether it's like triggering people because I, that's what I'm going to talk about or whether it's just telling them what they're going to get out of it. You want to give them a reason to click. You know, they're going to see, you open up YouTube, you're going to see 30, 40 videos in front of you in a row of you know 10, there's yeah. three, four rows. You have to compete with all my video game videos. Yeah, uh, for example, <laughs> yeah. Uh, for a while, I was like, oh, my technical content is going to make up for it. That's not the case. You have to make sure people are going to understand what are they going to get, what value you're going to give to their life, or how they're going to relate to you, or what problem you're going to solve for them based on your, your, your thumbnail or your title. That's the biggest one for me, is like understanding what my content is doing for people, and how do I hook them into wanting to watch my video. Uh, it's, a, it's a form of communication, you just don't get through images. Oh boy, Ben did this one this one time called Recon Sucks. And I <laughs> literally <laughs> called him on the phone. And I'm like, bro. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a proud moment for me. I, I messaged my, my buddy, I was like, guess what? I triggered one of my friends. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, it worked. Like, it worked, yeah. And he was like, see, it worked. It's engaging content. I literally said that to yeah, you. I was yeah, like, so like, yeah, I said, yeah. did that trigger you? He's like, yes. I was like, so you're telling me it worked, right? So do you see why I did it? <laughs> yeah, did you yeah, watch yeah, the video? Yeah, I was like, yeah, yeah. I'm like, yeah. I'm not talking bad about this thing. It's yeah, just, yeah. I have to get you to click. And yeah. if he clicks on it, someone like you clicking on it yeah. is a big thing for me. Yeah. It worked. No, it was, so, it was great. Yeah. I, and as soon as you told me, I realized, yeah. right? I was you like, oh, he won. Went, like, oh, he won. He won. He just got me. Yeah. 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 That's yeah. how they get you. <laughs> awesome discussion. We could go on for hours. Oh, yeah. And maybe we can do that later on tonight. Yeah. But uh, we have to wrap up the episode. Thanks so much for joining. I'm sure everyone's going to love this. And Thanks everyone for joining. We'll see you on the next episode. Thanks for having Thank us. You.